the good all, all the time. time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. As you can see on the screen, we got the projector working again. And I just heard from my wife that we're going to have a goal to shoot for music with the words as of the first week of January. So praise the Lord. And I hope and pray all goes well. Amen. Amen. Okay, so if you look around, you'll see some folks are not here. Keep them in your prayer, whether they be sick or they be in traveling, whatever the Lord uh, needs to help them with. Let's keep them in prayer. Lift it up. Amen. As you know, Uncle Art is not here. Pat, his wife, is still in the hospital. Um, she had an allergic reaction or a bad reaction to medication. So they're now trying to ground her and get her back to where she needs to be so she can go home. He's hoping to have her home, to have home health agency come in three days a week and help care for her. Um, Millie is, was admitted to the hospital. She was septic, carbon dioxide in her blood, a pneumonia infection. <clears throat> She's on lots of meds and fluids. From Robbie, he says that she is doing a little better as of yesterday afternoon, so keep her in prayer. Uh, Kathy Beeble and Butchie Beeble Jr. are both in the hospital. Keep them in prayer. Aaron and Rob, my uh, son and his, uh, uh, or my daughter and son-in-law is uh, have the flu, so keep them in prayer. Tony's friend, Kim and Jane, they have sinus infection, so keep them in prayer. They've been sick since January, or since Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Amen? My mind's going all over. I gotta get focused. <laughs> all right. So then the announcements, there will be Sunday service both next two Sundays, Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, just so you are awake. We are having service, okay? Yes. All right. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, God, for all the petitions and the requests made up unto you, Father God, through the prayer list. We ask, Father God, those that we may have forgotten to mention or not on the list, we ask God you touch them. You know the hearts of the people. You know the needs of the people, Father, because you are our God. You are God with us. We thank you, Lord, that you are who you are and that you do what you say. And your word is written in the blood of your Son. For everything that we ask, O Father, believing we shall have it according to your will, your good purpose, and for your glory. In Jesus' name we give you thanks. And God's people said, Amen. 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 All right. So again, like I said, I'm praising God that we have a projector working again. My boss at work, he's an IT tech, and he got it up and running for us and got it figured out. And as you can see, the words are actually better to see because we put a bit different background, so it's more brighter and stands out for you. We even sure. enlarge the words for you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. So we have that. And then um, as the first week of January, our goal is to get music with the words. So praise the Lord. Amen. 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 God fulfilling his promise to us. Amen. All right, so we'll have the worship team come up. And we'll get started. Get your praise on. <laughs> steps and he had a stroke broke his hip and he's got bleeding on the brain what's his name joe alderson can you text that to me so i don't i don't lose it yep that's what i'm on the prayer list he didn't give me a joe chance. alderson full body healing yes amen, amen. just on amen. the back page of my notes yeah. okay he's not texting joe alderson Jess, Lucy, and Asa. Um, a few others aren't here right now, so um, reach out. When you think about somebody, sometimes the Lord is prompting you. Um, we talked a little bit about it on Wednesday night, that sometimes the Holy Spirit and the Lord prompts us, and it might not be as loud as we need to recognize, but sometimes the Lord prompts us to, to touch base with somebody, to reach out to somebody, call somebody. 
um, or just be in prayer, or all of the above. I praise God. I say it frequently. Praise God anyhow. Yes, amen. <laughs> Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. Come. 
specific instruction this child shall be called Jesus this child born is the son of God born in flesh God's word fulfilled Jesus
Jesus when the sun goes down. Love him, love Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
Emmanuel, God with us. And that's what God spoke in my spirit. I am Emmanuel, God with you. And then I got up and I left the room and I was like feeling pretty good. I was like, I had a couple of tears in my eyes and I thought, like, okay, Lord, thank you just for talking to me and reminding me who you are. And he said it again, what is my name? I said, you're Emmanuel, God with us. And I was excited because I knew I had it. I was right. I didn't have to guess. I wasn't fishing for what he wants to know, what, he, what he's looking for me to answer. Because he gave me his answer. I am Emmanuel, God with us. So I was excited to give it back. I was like, okay, you're asking me again. I know it, God. I didn't forget it. Emmanuel, God with us. You know what he said? My name is Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right? I felt the same way, Peggy. I was like, wait a minute. God, what are you trying to tell me? He said, I am God with you, and I am Jesus within you. Amen? Amen. That's what God spoke to me this week. I am God with you, and I'm Jesus within you. Hallelujah. Through every action of our lives, God is with us from the beginning to the end. Life begins and ends in his name. Amen? Amen. We talked about it last week. We're talking about it again this week. What is Christmas? Why do you celebrate Christmas? Why the big hula? <laughs> Why go through all, all this stuff of putting up a tree, decorating? Many, many houses throughout the nations are decorating to celebrate this Christmas. What is Christmas? God with us. Jesus, the Savior of the world. That is what Christmas is. Amen? Amen. This morning, I want to share a Christmas message with you in two words. Emmanuel and Jesus. This morning, the name should ring loud and clear of the definition of what is Christmas. You see? Of all the names God had chosen, he chose these two for himself. Emmanuel and Jesus. Jesus. We sing the song all the time. There's just something about that name. Amen? Amen. Jesus. You have your Bibles with you. You're already there in Matthew or Luke. So let's turn to Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 23. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. And of course, this gives us the account of chapter, Jesus' birth. Chapter 1. Chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Like, this is how it happened. When his, his Mary, his mother, was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph said of her, Being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, I minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in the dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord, by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name, what? Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Somebody say amen. Amen. After he was called Emmanuel, what was his name to be called? Jesus. You see it? It's in the same scripture of Matthew 18, 23, also in the same scripture found in Luke. Bill and Gloria Gaither, does anybody know them? Yeah? Grew up with them, right? Old-time religious singers on television, very famous people. Bill and Gloria Gaither was blessed of God with the song they shared with us. And we have sang it many times here in Shiloh, as I've shared. We sang it today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's something about that name. 
Amen. I didn't tell my wife <laughs> that it was even mentioned in the notes. That's a pretty good thing. Praise the Lord. Let's sing it one last time. You ready for today? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. About it, that name is the account of the Christmas story in one word, Jesus. And I believe that's why God stopped me dead in my tracks this week, just yesterday, and said, what is my name? Because his name encompasses all of who he is. Amen? And that's what God wants to speak to us today. His name encompasses all that he is, all who he is, and all the what he shall do. Amen? If you don't understand that, listen to the message today. This prophecy, the prophecy concerning the kingdom of God and the house of David, were confirmed in the message that the angels gave to Mary and Joseph. What was the promise in his words? The promise is that a virgin will bring forth her son, and her son shall be called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. What a powerful message, what a beautiful promise, and what a faithful God we serve. The promise was a Messiah to come, a Savior, and that promise has been fulfilled. Somebody say amen. Amen. Moses, Isaiah, and Matthew's recorded words all perfectly aligned to confirm that God's word is true. God's wisdom and his will and his full view throughout the accounts of Jesus was foretold coming, and his purpose for doing so has been accomplished. Somebody say amen. Amen. That's exciting news, right? Foretold to mankind where his birthplace would be, what his birth parent would look like, what she is, who she is, and even his name was all foretold long before this Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, had arrived. Isaiah calls his name Emmanuel, God with us. So that all who would know that this Jesus is God incarnate. What's the word incarnate mean? It means that God took on human form in the body of Jesus Christ. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, the man, our God. What do the words God with us really mean, though? What does it really mean? And I think that's what God really wanted me to focus on, and I believe he wants you and I to focus on, especially during Christmas season, this season in your life. This name, Emmanuel, God with us, what does it mean to you? God with us means that in God, in reality, is with us in all form, <coughs> in all ways, like God is united to our human nature. Somebody say amen. Amen. What does that mean, Pastor Bob? God is united in our union and nature. Simply put, the Son of God, Jesus, assumed a complete human nature with all its limitations, without in any way giving up his supreme authority of who he is, so that he might serve as humanity's representative, being our substitute, our sacrificial lamb, and an example to us on how to be obedient unto God our Father. Somebody say amen. Amen. You see, when you say amen, I mean, that tells me you're getting this. You understand me, see? So don't be so quiet. Let me know that you're there. The Son of God assumed a complete human nature. Jesus came in the form of a human body. He had the mind and the will of God, but he performed in a human body, which has its limitations. 
I mean, he felt pain, he felt sorrow, he felt joy. Remember when he would sit with the children? His heart was full. He was ministering to the children. And they loved on him and he loved on them. Huh? But he also wept. He felt sorrow. He felt pain. He felt compassion. Look how many times that he looked at someone and said, Jesus, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus, his compassion turned toward the person screaming. And he met them where they were. Jesus had all the limitations of the human form as you and I do. But Jesus was without what? Sin. As a human, Jesus experienced all the ordinary but not sinful limitations of humanity. He grew, he developed, he experienced hunger, thirst, weariness, and the full range of all our human emotions. But this is still the truth that Jesus is without sin. I keep repeating that for a reason. Pay attention. We must know and believe that in his humanity, he was extremely, extremely faithful unto the Father. And it's an important factor of his saving work so that you and I can see and know and believe that he can relate and sympathize with us. He knows us wholeheartedly because he became one of us and he experienced everything that you and I would ever experience. Even before you would experience them, he knew what was coming. Being Jesus in God with us. He was God with us in Jesus in human form. Jesus lived out obedience to God as our example that in Christ Jesus, all is possible. You see? Through his life, Jesus is our representative and our substitute. Well, what does that mean, Pastor? Boy, you're getting deep today. God is our mediator. Jesus Christ is the mediator and our redemption. Through his sacrifice of his life, through his death in human form, and by his resurrection as Messiah, he has become our salvation. And to for all who come into a relationship with, by him by faith, he becomes Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Amen. He becomes Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. As a human, he also serves as our example, providing a real and tangible model for true obedience unto God. What did he say in the scripture? He said what? I do nothing of myself, but what I see and hear of my Father, that is what I do. Amen? If you have your Bibles with you, turn to John chapter 1, verse 14. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word was made flesh. Somebody say it with me. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Oh, did you hear that? And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, which means we saw who he is. We recognize him. And the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, you see, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld his glory. He made himself known. Hallelujah. So you see, if you believe on this name, Emmanuel, God is with us. On this name, Jesus, our Savior. You claim within your heart that the eternal Son of God became a human. And to call ourselves Christian, we live our lives completely in the belief that God sent his only begotten Son, Jesus, for us. And with us. Amen. Amen. No other reason than for our salvation did he come from heaven. In human form by the Holy Spirit through the Virgin Mary was he made human. He did this for what reason? For you and I. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament has foretold this was to happen. God himself foretold to us the how, the why, and even where this all would happen. Not one detail was left out or forgotten. Not one detail was not fulfilled. Even down to leading the wise men to where they found him, as we shared last Sunday. Emmanuel says of God, I am God with man, and I am God within man. Somebody needs to hear that today. I am with God, or excuse me, I am God with man, 
and I am God within man. You see, he is God with us to comfort, to enlighten, to protect, to defend, to provide a way of escape during times of trial and tribulation. He is also God with us in the hour of our death, to be with us in the moment of judgment. God is with us. Somebody say amen. Amen. And through the life, death, and resurrection of God's son, Jesus, he is in us. And you and I are with him and in him because of Jesus and what he has done on the cross. By and through the work of the cross, his name, this name Jesus, to those of us who believe in him and have faith in him, have life even unto eternity. Amen? Amen. During the biblical account of Exodus, I looked at it this week, because I thought that's where I would be going, but then God did incorporate it, but he went totally different direction than I expected. But during the biblical account of Exodus, I realized that Israel's greatest trouble came while Moses was on a mountain with God. You remember that story? Why do you suppose the people of God that decided to build for themselves a golden calf? Huh? Why do you suppose they did that? I've said it before, but I've come to believe that people were originally created knowing God in a personable and tangible way. For God says in the book of Genesis that he walked among Adam and Eve in the garden. And they were very familiar with him. God walked with them. He talked with them. So within mankind, I believe that when the curse of the sin was pronounced, the emotion of fear and loneliness and abandonment was experienced. And each of us experienced this even when we can't put a name on it. Some of us are so depressed we experience a sickness. And it gives us a disease. Some of us experience divorce or even empty nest syndrome when our children grow up and leave home, leaving our home feeling cold and empty. So when Moses was high up on the mountain, all those emotions, the fear, the loneliness, the abandonment feelings, I believe a majority of people began to feel these things. And while Moses was on the mountain, seemingly this was for a while, because these people began to feel afraid, alone, abandoned. And so the people influenced Moses' assistant Aaron to build an idol god, the golden calf. When people in general feel alone, afraid, abandoned, what do you normally do? Anyone? What do you normally do? Afraid. <laughs> you don't normally do that, but that's a good answer. That's what we should be doing. I'm afraid. I'll tell you about me. What I used to do was start searching for some source of comfort. Huh? Be it alcohol, drugs, sex, or just find a place to go where I can busy myself doing something to get myself out of thinking the way I'm thinking, out of feeling the way I'm feeling. Anything to fill up that emptiness, that loneliness, the pain of abandonment. Hello? I built for myself a symbolic calf, didn't I? Instead of running and following after God, instead of waiting on God, I built for myself a symbolic calf, that which will pacify me, that which appeases me, that which brings me comfort and assurity, you see. Even though temporary, even though it's a lie of the deception of the enemy to rob me of God's presence, I saw it as a golden calf, not realizing it was a golden calf. I believe that God called his name Emmanuel to give us the assurance that he is with us and in us now and forever. He has come to restore the lost relationship that occurred during the curse of sin, which he pronounced upon Adam and Eve and all generations thereafter, when mankind chose to disobey God and follow the lead of another other than this Emmanuel, God with us. Did you hear earlier I said, God walked with Adam and Eve, right? God with us. And through Jesus Christ, he became within us. By the power and anointing and working of the Holy Spirit, Jesus now lives on the inside of us. He abides with us. He's made his abode with us, which means his dwelling. You see? Now, God is not just walking with you. Jesus is within you. That's amazing. Adam and Eve did not experience that God is within. They only experienced him externally, that he is with. You see? You and I experience God is within us. So the loneliness, the abandonment, the fear, 
It should be gone, right? Right? It should be, but it's not. Hello? Look to Acts chapter 17, verse 28. It's not for a lot of people. But for those who put their faith and their trust and their hope in this Emmanuel, that God is with us, for those that put their hope and their faith and their trust in this Jesus who is within you, this is what the Word of God promises you. Acts 17, verse 28. For in him we live, I'm going to paraphrase, we move, we have our being, as certain also of your own pearls have said, for we are of his offspring. Amen? Amen. You are the children of the Father God who created you. People often forget that, that you are the heirs of the Son of God. You are the heirs of everything that Jesus inherited through the Father is now your inheritance. You see? Everything which is of God now is within you. You have the power to overcome fear, loneliness, and abandonment. <coughs> you have the power within you. Jesus Christ is within you. And he has crucified those things. They are no longer alive within you, you see. For light cannot abide in the darkness. Darkness cannot stand the light. There's a separation. Hello? But what do we do? We cling to that thing which holds us in the abandonment emotion, in the fear emotion, in the lonely emotion. Now, I'm sure you're thinking about this age. Well, Pastor Bob, this doesn't sound like a Christmas message. <laughs> Let me assure you, this is the true Christmas message. You see? Amen. Praise God, he came looking for you and me. Praise God that he found you and me. Praise God that he saved us, you and me. Praise God that now he is on the inside of us, within us. You see? God has won our victory. But people want to use crutches. Use those things to hold on to that brings them the immediate comfort of their physical flesh, that bring them that peace of mind of their physical woes and their ailments and their, 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 oh, woe is me, I'm having a hard life, you see. They look for that as a medicine, whatever they have that attaches themselves to. Alcohol, beer, sex, marijuana, whatever it is. Some people go for long drives, hello, I keep my mind busy. If I'm so down and hurt and, and I'm feeling lonely and depressed, I take a drive. And sometimes, more times than not, I'm not going to lie, more times than not, I have God with me in my thoughts and pattern. But sometimes, hello, there's those sometimes. Sometimes I'm there just to escape life. Anybody else? Yep. Sometimes you just need to get by yourself and you're not looking, hello, be honest, you're not looking to spend time with God and hear an answer from God. You just want to escape. Yep. Just get away. Just not have anything to deal with. Am I talking to anybody yes, today? Yes, Lord. Hello. You see, I don't know what the Christmas message says to you. But to me, it says exactly that God is with me. I will never need to be afraid, alone, or abandoned again. God is with me, and he's within me, you see. And no matter how far I go, no matter what device that I reach out to, no matter what I put my hope and trust in, God is still with me. He's within me. He has not separated himself from me. But I can separate myself from being in his presence, can't I? Hello? And one main thing that will definitely cause you to be separate from the presence of God is what? Sin. That thing that you look unto as the golden calf, that will separate you from the love of your God. Mm -hmm. The name Jesus is also God's name. And Jesus means Savior. After Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, the angel Gabriel appeared to her, told her that she will conceive a son by the Holy Spirit. Luke 1.3 and you shall call his name 
Jesus. Then when Joseph learned his bride to be was with child, what did he do? He decided to break the engagement, didn't he? Quietly, because he loved Mary, but he also realized that if he would divorce her publicly, she'd be put to shame and really possibly face major consequences. Kill. Amen. Matthew 1, 20 through 21 says, But an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Why? Do you not know? Can you imagine what Joseph was probably thinking in his heart? I spoke to someone this week, and they were lost for words when they heard the word of God. They just simply did not have anything to say. I was thinking about that when I finished my message here, that Joseph, can you imagine? He was silent on the inside, but can you imagine what he was saying on the inside of his heart? But God, Mary is with someone else's child. I love her, but I can't see her killed, but I can't see her tortured, I can't see her shame, but I can't be the husband of a woman who's cheated on me. Can you imagine his thoughts racing? That's why God said, do not be afraid. Huh? I love her. I can't do this thing, but I got to do this thing. Don't be afraid. I love her, but she's a, she has a child to another man. Don't be afraid. I love her, but my world is upside down. I can't do this. Don't be afraid. I can't live like this. I can't go on like this. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Somebody needs to say amen right there. Amen. Conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Jesus. <coughs> Why the name Jesus? A couple of people spoke to me this week that God used to put in my message. Pastor Ed reminded me a few days ago that the name Jesus is a shortened form of Joshua. 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 Which means Savior. A Savior to come. Hello? To save. Joshua. Again, I got to thinking of all the famous names God could have chosen from the accounts of Israel's history. God chose the name Jesus. Shortened form of Joshua. Then I thought, wow. <laughs> if Joshua means to save, then what makes perfect sense for God to came and called himself Jesus, the Savior? Hello? After years of reading and studying my Bible, I believe that God's greatest design to show himself, his true character to us, is by his name. Huh? After all, every name given has a character reference meaning. Have you ever looked at your name as to what the biblical meaning is concerning your name? Mm -hmm. I encourage you to Google it and find the meaning of your name and see if it fits the character of who you are. Hello? Okay. God's first impression to us is his name. Savior. Salvation. You see? Our salvation. The word of salvation is God's first word to us through his personal name of his son, Jesus, the Savior, the Messiah. Hello? Throughout Israel's history, God revealed to his children who he is, and the people learn his name by the characteristics that he has shown of himself. Christ's first step toward us was not as our creator or even as our king. His first step toward us is the Messiah to come. Hello? There are many names of God in Israel's history. Just to name a few. Yahweh, which means Lord Jehovah. Adonai, meaning Lord, Master. El Elohim, meaning the Most High God. El Shaddai, meaning Lord God Almighty. Jehovah El Roy, meaning the God who sees. Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord will provide. Jehovah Rapha, meaning the Lord who heals. Jehovah Nisi, 
meaning the Lord is my banner. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is my peace. And so many others. But I offered these so that you and I can see that the name of Jesus also has a specific characteristic of God's nature. God calls his name Jesus, which also represents God's loyalty, his mercifulness, his gracious and loving Savior, our salvation. You see, that name meets our greatest need, fulfills our greatest desires. We all need a Savior. Amen? Look at what we go through day in and day out. Don't you sometimes find yourself praying, Oh, God, deliver me from this. Save me from this. I've had enough. Get me out of this, God. Help me. Hello? I can't think of a day that I haven't thought, Man, I wish I didn't have to do this. <laughs> Man, I wish I didn't have to see this. Man, I wish I didn't have to hear this. Man, I wish this wasn't so. How about you? My babies are sick with the flu. They thought they had COVID. And then little Austin, they're afraid he's going to get it. May God deliver them from this. I don't want to see him sick. I don't want to see them go through that. Lord, this is a celebration of your birth. Coming up, I don't want them to be sick. You're looking at, at all these things that happen in day-to-day -day life. Aren't you looking for a Savior? You see, he's not just the Savior of your soul, but he's the Savior of the things that we experience in life. Whether it be that fear, loneliness, or abandonment, your Savior is within you. Your Savior is with you. Your God is with you. Somebody say amen. Amen. No other name is better than that name. Hello? No other name would be sufficient for all that we have need of. Hello? I don't know about you, but I need saving for many things. <laughs> Alcohol, drugs, hatred, unforgiveness, idolatry, idolatry, depression, stress, anxiety, deceit, and even demons, and even death. I need this Savior. How about you? Yes. I now truly understand why Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, God had the angel Gabriel specify what that child's name was to be called. Mm -hmm. Hello? And you shall call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Mm -hmm. Is that not reason to celebrate the birth of Christ? I don't care what day it is, December 25th, whatever, whether it was in the fall, whether it was in the winter, whether it was in the spring, who cares? We have chosen our heart to celebrate his coming. Amen? Amen. Receiving God's forgiveness and having God's favor is the solution of all solutions. You see? I mean, think about it. Without God, no other solution truly lasts. But with God, all problems will truly fade. I mean, think about it. Without God, no other solution will be sufficient or totally commit itself to your deliverance, to your salvation. No other name under heaven are thou saved. Amen? Amen. Yet in saving us, he also delivered us from our biggest problem. What's your biggest problem today? Anybody? Shout one out. What is your biggest problem today? Overeating. Overeating. You know what my biggest problem is? Right here. Sex. That's my biggest problem. You see? He delivered us from our biggest problem. And he filled that emptiness I was talking about a few minutes ago. The feelings of being afraid, lonely, and abandoned. Jesus saved us from all that separates us from him. That sin that separates us from him. That isolation that destroys all that God loves is available and out there, but he came looking for you and I to save us. Oh yeah, that devil, he hates you. He hates you more than he hates anything else in this world. But he hates God even the more. Hello? The devil hates God more than even you. But because God loves you so much, he hates you. And because he can get at you and not at God any longer, he hates you and he will try to destroy you. He'll take your joy, your peace, your comfort, but only if you let him. How can I overcome this, Pastor Bob? Especially during this season called Christmas. 
All the past Christmases haunt me as if I am that Mr. Grinch. Or I am that Mr. What's his what's his name? The the, the three ghosts come and visit him? Scrooge. The Scrooge. Huh? The Christmas <laughs> haunts me. Reminds me of the Christmas past. And sometimes it's not bad things, but it's sad things because there's no one here anymore. We don't do that which we used to do. The family doesn't get together anymore. I don't have this and that and the other anymore. I'm so miserable during Christmas. I wanted to hurry up and pass. I'm so lonely. I'm so afraid. I feel so abandoned. And you have lost the meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. The devil hates you. And he doesn't want you to remember that you have an inheritance of heaven. You are God's called child, his sons and his daughters, with Jesus showering you with every spiritual blessing. And you have a place in the heavenly realm of which the devil was cast out from. You see? He's jealous. He's envious of you because you have a place in heaven that he has lost. You have all the inheritance of heaven that could have been a part of his life. Not that he has an inheritance that you have. He would never have that. For he was an angel. Don't forget. But he enjoyed the throne and the glory of heaven. As you and I will. He hates you because you have promised to that. How do I know this? God promises of this and written and sealed it in his word by his blood. You see? Christmas isn't about celebrating December 25th, as my wife said. Christmas isn't about celebrating with all the decorations, the hoopla, and all the food, and all the gathering of family. Yes, it's a part of it, but we're sharing Christ with them in our celebration. That's the purpose we celebrate Christmas. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. If you have it, say amen. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ. Hallelujah! Is that not enough to excite you? You have all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now Colossians, Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 through 14. Colossians chapter 1 verse 12 through 14. Here's the key. Here's the purpose. Here's the reason we celebrate Christmas. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 through 14 says, Giving thanks unto the Father. Hello? Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, who has translated us, trans, trans, who has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, who... We have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Again, as I asked you last Sunday, why do you celebrate Christmas? If this is not the reason, Colossians 1, 12 through 14, if this is not the reason, then I'll ask it this way. Why celebrate Christmas at all if Jesus is not the reason for the season? Amen. Christmas serves as a reminder that divine love has come down from heaven. Eternal hope has arrived. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men is given. Endless joy awaits those who hope, those who trust, those who place their faith in this Emmanuel, God with us, in this Jesus within us. All because God took action, and he did so because of his great love for you and me, for mankind. Luke chapter 2, verse 13 through 14 tells us that heaven erupted with a new song. Hello? You want to go there with me? Look at it. Take my word for nothing, God's word for everything. Luke chapter 2, verse 13 through 14. Heaven erupted with a new song. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. No wonder we sing joy to the world. 
We sang it today. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us, gives me reason to celebrate. Jesus is within me. I have reason to celebrate. I don't remember, Pastor Ed, where the scripture is, but Jesus has said, if you will not praise me, the rocks will rise up and praise me. You see? I celebrate Jesus in the most expressive way I can. Every part of me wants to enjoy the reason for the season. As I celebrate, I plan to let everyone know around me why I celebrate. God is with us, and Jesus still saves today. Amen? Amen. Day in, day out, my life tells people, reminds <coughs> others, that God is with us, and Jesus saves. There's no other name found in heaven or earth by which mankind is saved. These are the words of Peter in Acts 4.12. Because of Jesus, we celebrate as Mary did in Luke 147, with shouts of joy and praise, with sharing the good news, with great anticipation, great expectation, great excitement. Within my heart shouts the words, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Why? Because the mighty one, the holy one, he has done great things for me. Amen. That's what Mary's words were when she learned of the news that she was with the born of a child from God, the Savior of the world. If we focus on the purpose of celebrating Christmas, I truly believe that we will find within ourselves that the true essence of this holiday lies in the profound impact that Jesus has had on each and individual life. If we are looking at it that way, then Christmas is a past is but a glimpse of history. You have a future you need to focus on. That focus is, that focus is on today. <coughs> For this is the day. Hello? Lord. The Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Why? For this is the day of salvation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus touched me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, what joy fills my soul. Not so much the date was Jesus born touched me. Not so much on how we elaborate on how we are to decorate, how we are to celebrate. Even so much as my wife says, give gifts and receiving of the gifts. That's not how Jesus touched me. Right? It's time to reflect on the teachings of Jesus and strive to embody the love and comfort and compassion that he showed to all. That's what touched me. Jesus' compassion that he showed to me. Let's come into oneness of purpose to celebrate the gift of salvation. Help spread the joy and kindness to those around us. Let's have Jesus be the reason of this season. Amen. As El Shaddai, God Lord Almighty, he deserves to be worshipped and revered. For he holds the power and authority of the entire universe. Jesus, as the embodiment of God, came to earth to reveal God's love and his sacrifice because of you. He didn't have to do this. There's nothing in the universe that forced him to do this. His love for you chose freely to give of his son's life for you, for me. How obedient is it that you would ignore such a gift? Offering the free gift of salvation, eternal life to all who believe in him, who are all obedient unto his word. That is what Christmas means to you, to me. You see, once you have accepted Jesus, the Emmanuel, that God has now come to you. And you will experience this wonderful Prince of Peace, this Jesus, for he is now within you. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. I give it unto you, not as the world gives. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You see, Jesus assures us, just like he did with his disciples, that his name also means that he is the Prince of Peace. He's our peace. He's our comfort to all who believe in him. Messiah means the anointed one, the chosen one, 
He who brings salvation and deliverance. By referring to Jesus as the Prince of Peace, Isaiah acknowledges Jesus' role as the ultimate source of our peace and our harmony in the world. I believe that this title highlights his divine authority and his ability to bring true peace to those who trust in him. If you are without peace today, if you're living of the past and not for the future, and not even looking unto today, I encourage you to look unto Jesus and find this peace that goes beyond all understanding. No one will be able to explain to you. You couldn't even possibly understand how you can have such peace in the times that you've been so much turmoil and tribulation and hardships and past memories that God brings you a peace. The second coming of Jesus will bring about the restoration of complete peace, fulfilling our Messiah's plan. Because God's plan is not completed, not finished. I don't know if you realize that, but he's not done. The type of peace that God is referring to here is a peace that goes beyond no longer at war with one another, that goes along no longer with people having conflict or turmoil in their life, but it means something deeper and more profound. This peace on earth, God is about to bring. He refers to the peace that brings with it tranquility and the reconciliation under God. When you have that type of peace, knowing that God is for you and not against you, Nothing on this earth will matter to you. I don't like it. I tear up every time I think about it. My best friend in life says, I can't wait to go home. And I'll be done. And I'll be with Jesus. And my job is done. I don't know. <clears throat> I started out this season thinking just like you all do, as your viewers have shared with me. I don't like to think of Christmas past. I've lost too much. I don't like to think of Christmas past. I've been through too much. But I like to think of this Christmas now. Because Christmas now, God is with me. Christmas now, Jesus saved me. And yes, I miss those that have gone on, but I don't dwell on their gone. I know the majority that I have in my heart. I believe they're with the Father. But this is the purpose for which he came. That we can be reconciled, be at peace, and know that we're going to be with him for eternity. That is Christmas. The peace on earth God refers to is the peace that brings with it tranquility and reconciliation with God. Jesus' return is another reason to celebrate Christmas. Because the prophecy is not complete until he does return. Therefore, we can also celebrate the coming, the second coming of Jesus. Because he will not only establish an outward peace among men, but also spiritual healing and wholeness for all who believe and are obedient unto death. And that person will be raised up in Christ Jesus and celebrate him for all eternity. That is Christmas. Knowing that Emmanuel, God is with us, we also should then know that God's presence is with us, in us, signifying who this Jesus is. He is God in our midst. By the Holy Spirit's baptism, he lives within us. This would prove that God's presence is not limited to physical form, but can be felt within the believer to overcome anything that the world throws at you. And together, we can come in fellowship with God and worship Him in peace and tranquility. You can stand if you like. Praise you, Father God, for who you are. Praise you, Father God, for all that you've done. Praise you, Father God, for what you will do. And if you don't know this Emmanuel, God with us, this Jesus within us, I encourage you to invite him into your heart, into your life. <coughs> Wholeheartedly embrace him as your Lord and Savior today. 
By doing so, you will find salvation from your sins and also encounter God's presence in your daily life. That's the key, in your daily life. You see, when you invite God in your heart and your life, it's not a moment of passion and it fades. It's not a day or a week or a month and it fades. This is for all eternity when you ask God to come into your life. Just as Mary and Joseph accepted the angel's divine message and then believing God's perfect plan and purpose, their lives were fulfilled for their purpose, for their time. To you as followers of Jesus, I say this. Accepting God's grace, mercy, and love, his invitation as Lord and Savior of your life, you and I have entered into a reconciliation, a renewed relationship with our Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son, Jesus. He is all of whom He has proclaimed Himself to be. Now it is your turn to be all that He has said you are to be. Celebrate Jesus, for without Jesus in your life, you have no reason to be at all, not alone to celebrate and so in celebrating Christ Jesus, let us show ourselves faithful in proclaiming unto a lost and dying world that Jesus is the reason for the season, and he still reigns and saves today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. One little side note that God put in my spirit as I was driving here today, and he wants to put it, us all in check over something. So if you could sit down for a minute. You might need a moment with God in a minute here. But God has called upon us to live as examples unto a world that is darkened with nothing but confusion, fear, abandonment, and loneliness. And you are the light of the world. In this time of year, so many people have so many emotional roller coaster feelings going on. And there are many people that look to end their life. There are many people that are enclosed and lonely and afraid and abandoned. There are many people that don't have what you have. God with you and God Jesus within you. If this season is the most troubling time for most seniors and teenagers alike, it's statistically known that the suicidal rate is in this month and the next month the greatest of all. Reach out to those that you know that are alone this year, maybe living alone, maybe broken up a relationship, maybe of just feeling abandoned, lonely, and afraid. Reach out to them. Let them know that they are not by themselves. And in your own way, as the Lord gives you lead and the Spirit leads you, give them the reason for the season. Give them Jesus. For that is the greatest gift you can unwrap this year for Jesus. He said, do save those, point those back the Savior, the one that saves. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for reminding us the true purpose of which you came, that you would have none lost, but all come to salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray, Father God, that each of us will be a shining star, a star of David showing forth the miraculous is about to come. Show us forth, Father God, as examples, living testimonies of your power, of your resurrection power, Father God, that raises though we were dead, yet we shall live. In the blood of Jesus Christ, we have promised a hope and a future. May we point the way to the lost, the lonely, the abandoned, the fearful. May we be that example, set in our attitude, in our actions, in our life examples, Father, that they will look unto us as they look unto a star to lead them. We are that star that you said you called us the light of the world. Let us shine forth, Father God, and bring those into the presence of the Messiah, the Savior, Emmanuel God with us, Jesus within us. In Jesus we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Love See you. Next week. See you next Sunday. Amen. You guys, I brought the cookies, so please. Take, I even got takeout the boxes down there. So do, I do not want them. So they're all yours. Now I have tons at home. So those are all yours to make their little triumphant home, whatever. But please.
Take them. Take them. <laughs> <laughs>